So function trains in Dialog API. I've got a, a script that I'm running, but this is actually evaluating these expressions in the session, and we can go off piste a little bit and try some expressions if we, uh, if we find we need to. So this is a demonstration followed by a question, actually two questions, which I'll need. I, I, there'll be questions at the end, so pay attention. Um, Roger Hui joined the dialogue team, um, well, he's sort of been coming on for a year or so. What I've noticed is that, uh, coincidentally, at about the same time that Roger joined us, there was a flowering of creativity in the development team. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it, you know, one of those things. What are the chances of that? And um, function trains have been in J for years, nearly two decades, I think. Um, so they're not a new idea, um, but it was interesting to experiment with this and see how they fit into dialogue. Um, dialogue is starting from a slightly different position from J, so it's not quite the same. Well, that's one of the questions. <clears throat> okay. Now, the, there's a good story here. Um, when Iverson was thinking about um, calculus <coughs> and other areas of, of mass, um, he wanted to represent the idea of if f and g are functions, uh, mathematicians type uh, write f plus g when actually they mean f of omega plus g of omega. But they like to write f plus g. And Ken and Co spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to write this in APL by defining some primitive operators um, to, re to represent this idea, because it's an idea that is pervasive. It occurs a lot in APL, uh, where, you, where you're uh, um, doing these sort of things, f plus g and f times g. Um, and the story is that um, Ken Iverson, um, I didn't know this until quite recently, had written into his contract with IBM that he was allowed to take a nap in the afternoon um, when he was working. And uh, I think he had that written into the contract of the people who worked for him as well. It was an essential part of his uh, day to have a little uh, power nap in the afternoon, and it refreshed his mind. And the story is that he'd been wrestling with how to do this um, F plus G for, for many years. And on the way back from the APL conference in Australia, in Sydney, he had a little nap in the plane coming back. And when he woke up, he came to the, the conclusion, this conclusion, that, that and the way he expresses this, is that uh, the forms F and G and F times G are not used in APL. In other words, they are, if you have three functions in a row in isolation, there are syntax error. <clears throat> you can't write plus minus. In standard dialogue, you can't write plus minus times and hit return. You'll get a syntax error because there's no argument to the right. So these forms were not in use, and he could assign meanings to them. So all of these years of trying to figure out how you could spell F plus G in APL, the answer was F plus G. You just write it as, uh, as the same way as mathematicians. And that is genius. Uh, you know, I, I could never have thought that. That's, the simplicity is genius. <clears throat> oh, here's an example. For, for example, um, uh, one jot uh, circle and two jot circle <coughs> as sine and cos, respectively. So um, that's an example of um, sine plus cos, for example. Uh, three functions, f, g, and h. That form, f, g, h, where f, g, and h are functions, is a syntax error in dialogue. So the experiment on the conference stick is to define three trains, the three functions in a row, to implement a fork. And this is the fork. This is If you've used j, this is identical to j's forks. So the definition is... The F, G, H in, uh, in isolation applied to omega is defined to be 
f of omega and g of and h of omega with a g in the middle. So monadic f, monadic h with a dyadic g in the middle. That's the definition of a fork, a monadic fork. And a dyadic fork, where we have an alpha, is defined like this. So instead of a syntax error, if I have f, g, and h in isolation, it is defined to be this, this transformation in the conference edition. <coughs> and you could dream up um, a number of definitions for three trains, but to quote Roger, this is a slam dunk. Um, this is a very powerful, this construct appears so frequently um, in mathematics as just to be a very, um, it's, it's just the same solution. I'll show you some examples of this. And it, what I've noticed, I'm a newcomer to these things, um, I've been playing with them, and they start popping up. You start seeing um, examples of this in your code where this is good. So here is an example of a monadic fork um, sum divide shape if you look at the transformation this is a monadic one so this is the sum of omega divided by the shape of omega which is an expression for mean Yeah. so that's a pretty nice way of um, <coughs> the mean item of a vector this is a classic use of a fork a monadic case. And think, uh, oh, uh, I can name the fork. So a fork, again, these are three functions in isolation. There's no array to the right, so they are, they, that you can recognize as a fork. And in that case, I can just name the fork with an assignment arrow, like I can name any other function. So this is a way of coding the mean function using forks as opposed to D funds or, uh, or trad funds. <coughs> And if I, I test it, always test the software before you ship it. Uh, there it is working. Um, it's probably good. We've got plenty of time. If you have questions, shout, put your hand up, shout out. We can, uh, we can take them on the fly, <coughs> unless they're difficult questions, in which case we'll be short of time. Um, here's another dialect fork. So this is some, comma, some catenate product. So what this is doing is a, is a dyadic fork. If you look at the, maybe I should, I'll use, point you, no, let me point you in the mouse. That's a clever thing. If you look at um, this production here, so the dyadic fork is just this definition. So what we're doing in this case is 6 plus 2 and 6 times 2, and then we're catenating the results. So that's a, <clears throat> a sum and a product. Yeah? Now, I'll just take a little um, deviation here. This uh, plus dot times is just not, not a fork, it's a derived function because the guy in the middle is an operator. <coughs> and I have a, a, a little D operator that um, is just used to display function trees. Uh, uh, so in this case, DFT stands for dir display function tree. So it takes a, 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 a derived function or a function on the left um, and I think the three means let's spread it out a bit with three spaces. <clears throat> um, so if I look at my average definition, um, there's a, a, I'll be coming back to this display, but this is how a fork is displayed. This is a nice way of representing a, a fork. And you can actually see it's like an upside down fork with the, with the prongs sticking down. So that's just a, one way of displaying a fork. Now, um, Say I have, here's a fork, that if we take a, a fork plus comma, uh, sorry, sum comma difference, and then we add a couple more things on the end, and a couple more things on the end, then the way this is parsed, these are long functions, this is why they're called trains and not just triples, is <clears throat> the way the parser um, works with these things is that it plugs along from the right, and it identifies the first three functions. Because we don't hit an array first and we've got functions together, then we know that we're in a train. So it binds those functions to produce another function. And then it comes along and picks two more up to make another fork. And finally, it's got the last two to make another fork. So this is a fork. Reading from the bottom, this is a fork 
Whose rightmost tine is a fork, whose rightmost tine is a fork. And if I do exactly the same expression but using DFT, you can see this. Um, this effectively is just uh, showing you the, um, it's inverted that picture, but here we can see uh, a representation of what's happening. So again, from the, um, the, the, the major fork is on the left, and then its rightmost tine is a fork, and its rightmost tine is a fork. <coughs> And if I apply this to, a, a, to arguments, you can work this out for yourself. But this, this amazed me when Roger showed um, this to me. I said, if you have trains, you can't have vectors of functions. Plus, minus, times, divide can't mean a vector of functions. And he said, sure you've got vectors of functions. Because what this result is, is the 6 plus 2 is the first item and a 6 minus 2 is the next item, and a 6 times 2 is the third item, and a 6 divided 2 is the fourth item. So effectively, with this mechanism, you have vectors of functions. Cool. <coughs> yeah? If it was about the point, it would be a very specific application of vectors of functions. Is that not correct? In other words, if you had general arrays that contain functions at every element, does that sort of uh, give you a uh, even a more general application? Yeah, okay, I, uh, yes, we, the, uh, uh, let me paraphrase uh, you know, uh, your question. I think the APL community has argued about arrays of functions for a long time. and. The, one of the problems is, you, if you have a race of functions like that, you need a meta level in order to select <coughs> functions. So there have been many proposals for doing general arrays of functions. This is less general, but it gives you some of the uh, functionality, some of the ability to do some of these things. So yes, it's, it's, it's an alternative. It's a, so it's, I'm sorry, just to follow on question, and if you implement this in the language, Yes, uh, and, and this is right, and, and I think this is back to the slam dunk thing. Given three functions is a, currently a syntax error, you've got one shot at giving a definition for that. Um, so, um, but uh, I think this is so powerful, and I'll, sh I'll try and give you some examples of why the fork is such a good, um, a good thing. That it, there's, it's, I think it's much better than... Um, having a sort of simplistic uh, uh, vector of functions. We're, we're, watch this space. John? Yeah. Does that vector of functions, um, yeah. is it a, a, a generally a vector in the old form with commas delimited? Yeah, yes, comma delimited, yes. Yes, it's, yes. it's comma delimited functions, yeah. We, you can think of it like that, but it's, that's not how it works. No, but, but I think that's just a beautiful, um, I, was, uh, I was sold when I saw that. Oh yeah, okay, let's take another little um, tributary. Um, so, uh, just to reinforce, the three trains, the, the slam dunk definition for three trains is a fork as defined above. Now, if we just uh, take an aside for a moment, um, constant functions, here is a constant function, and this is written as a defun. So this guy in the middle, um, ignores, there is, no, there is no mention of alpha or omega in here, so this defun absorbs its left argument, which is 88, and absorbs its right argument, which is 99, and it returns a 10. So this is a function, this little function between the braces, whatever you apply it to, monadically or dyadically, returns a 10. And there are, um, these are, the, uh, a, it's like one of the primitive building blocks of functions. It turns out to be a very useful function. <clears throat> um, so, for example, if I use it in this context, here's a look, here's a fork. There's th there are three functions in a row. Yeah? So, this is an FGH kind of um, train. Um, and what this is going to do, if we looked at the definitions above, is going to do 
2 constant function 3 and 2 reshape 3 and then it's going to have the product of the uh, <coughs> of those two results so that is equivalent to just 10 times 2 reshape 3 let's see if that works yeah so this is 10 times the 2 rate to reshape of 3 and um, the, I've, I'm stealing all Roger's material here. Um, this form um, is, is sufficient, appears sufficiently uh, frequently as to deserve its own little piece of syntax. And so we can introduce <coughs> another train, which is a form that's not used in APL. If I have an array and two functions, that is also a syntax error at the moment. So it's also a three train. And so I can assign a meaning. So what I can do is I can assign this guy to mean the same as this, a shorthand for this. And I think, um, again, leaning on Roger's experience, Ken didn't live to see this introduced into J, but Roger has told me that he really wished he could have seen the smile on Ken's face when um, this, this form was introduced into J. It's a very common thing. And it's, I've, I'm using F, G, and H to represent functions, and A, B, and C to represent arrays. So I call this the A, G, H, pronounced ah! um, syntax. This is a, so we have an array and two functions. And it's defined to be. Um, it's, this is just the, these are just the rules for um, uh, expanding it in this case. Yeah. Can you just tell us how that doesn't conflict with that doesn't come? Yeah, I'll, I'll come on to that in a moment if you um, if you uh, bear with me for a moment. It, it sort of fits in nicely, I think. Okay. So so far we have plagiarised J. This is exactly the definition that, that J has. And now we, we, we start getting onto the questions where we're diverging slightly. <clears throat> so this is, uh, this is this form. Um, and this is a monadic, uh, so that's the dyadic case. This is the monadic case. Um, so again, this is a train, a three train of the AGH variety applied to a four, which is equivalent to 10 times iota four. But uh, I could have named this separately or um, held it separately as a separate function. The, the, uh, the syntactic item within the um, parentheses is a function, a monadic function in this case. In that, yep. in that particular case, is that, is that the same as 10 times job Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Some of these um, forms have equivalent, uh, I can do the same thing with a, with a jot, and some are. The, the, the FGH version I, can, I can't do with a jot. It's, uh, it, that's harder. Okay. Right, now here's another form. Now this is where we diverge from J. This is, and this is very experimental. First of all, <coughs> none of this stuff may wind up in dialogue. The, I think um, uh, Morton was saying that the conference edition now rather than just being something that was on its way to the uh, being mainstream dialogue we can pick and choose uh, what, which of these things we want from dialogue so we can, uh, uh, we can certainly have uh, regular three trains here is another one the form FBH is also a syntax error so we could define it to be this is a sane, um, a sane definition for it and there are some nice examples of uh, uses of this. Um, uh, oh, and this is a monadic use. So, um, so the first one was effectively the two reshape of the 10 take. And this is the reverse of the 10 take. And they could be defined with jots. So effectively, it's just take, removing the parentheses in this case. Yeah? Yeah, OK. okay. <clears throat> and this is leading it. This is very experimental, this stuff. 
Um, but here's an example of an FBH. Um, that should really say three train returns. To, I'm not sure that's a, <coughs> a fork. It should say three train. So here's another example of a constant function. And it's a, quite a nice looking constant function using left and right. But whatever that's applied to returns a 10. And so that's um, constant function 10 applied each, i to 4. Um, here's the equivalent d fun, and I think I have a timing. Uh, this is a uh, this is a boast. I, I gave the last time I gave this presentation. I came unstuck with this because it wasn't faster. Uh, but I'll, let's just see what this is doing. Sorry, I should explain. The CMPX function is a, is from the Defens workspace, and what it does is to take a number of expressions in um, in quotes. And it runs them a, a, a number of times until uh, a, a second or something has passed. And then it divides by the number of times in loop to give you a, a timing. So the first expression uh, <coughs> took, uh, what is that, 0 0.9 microseconds, 0.94 microseconds, 94 uh, 10 to the neg 7 to run. And the, uh, the fork one uh, only took 4. So... Um, the, the fork one was 58% quicker than the defund. And some of that is because when, a, when you go into a defund, there's a certain amount of setup um, to happen, whereas this stuff, is a little, uh, this stuff is a little slicker. In fact, the work is done at this time when this is bound. So there's an argument to say these, these, for small things, this is, uh, this is quicker. <coughs> Okay, so that's, that's an advantage. Um, well, here's another example. This is um, another example of the FBH fork where this is catenating a minus between reduction. Yeah. So again, you could do that with a defund, but it's sort of first. Uh, this may not be the way to do this because there are better ways of achieving uh, this thing, but it's an, it's an example. Um, so there, there's a couple of uses of it. Okay, so what I'd like to do is give you a, three tra uh, a summary of three trains, uh, definitions. Um, <coughs> so let, let me do this and then I'll rack the screen up. Okay, so these are all possible. Um, there, is, there are no other um, possibilities with three trains because if I put an array on the right, I can't have an FG... C train because that's already works in dialog that just applies G to C and F to the result of that so those are all we've explored all of the syntax errors and given a definition to them monadic and dyadic so that's uh, that's the end of Act One when, when you said you could have a vector functions yeah. Commas, yeah, yeah. Um, any reason why in theory they couldn't be used with functions? Oh no, they can. They can any functions, yeah, yeah. F, G, and H can be uh, functions, so they can be any kind of functions you want. Yeah, yeah. It's the syntax because you because you've got. Uh, if you have one function on its own, then that's fine. That's just a function. If you have two functions or three functions or four functions, and you don't have an array to the right, then that's a syntax error. That, uh, as Ken elegantly put it, that form is not used by APL. Which, uh, so that's, that's a nice way of saying it. Yeah? For the, um, <coughs> for the second and third lines there, do you consider those definitions of what they mean to be slam dunks? No. Well, um, a bit slam dunky. The, the, the top one is definitely slam dunk. And one of the things with the top one is that you can, uh, it's interesting from a mathematical point of view, because one of the things I can do with these forks is to take any expression, no, an arbitrarily complex expression of arrays and functions um, with alphas and omegas sprinkled into them. And from that, I can draw on a piece of paper a syntax tree for that. We know how to do that. So I've got the 
the leading leftmost function at the top of the tree, and in its left argument is the subtree to the left, and its right argument is the subtree to the right. So if I draw, another way of doing this is draw any complex tree you like, binary tree, or tree with uh, at most two subtrees, and then populate the leaves with a mixture of alphas, omegas, 42s, arrays, whatever. And using the top form, I can change that into uh, a series of forks. And that's a very useful, um, technically, that's a very useful thing to be able to do. OK. Right, now, um, we'll carry on for a moment. Right, so three, we've seen three, five, seven trains implement sequences of forks. What about two, four, six trains? Because we haven't given a, a, um, a definition for these. So an odd number of functions is a sequence of three trains. Um, but what about this one? Here's a... Here's our friend... Here's the friend that we had before, that our vector of functions, but it's got an additional function to its left. And so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight functions in a row. And the way this is parsed is a, a parser again comes along from the right, grouping in threes. But here at the end, it's got a function, it just has two functions. Each of the, 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 the first three bind to make a function, the next three bind to make a function, the next three bind to make a function, and now we have two. And this binds to make a two train. So we only have those two possibilities. The number of functions in a row is either odd or even. If it's odd, then we have a series of uh, three trains. If it's even, we have a series of three trains followed by a single two train. Those are the rules. Because you can parenthesize these things and have um, mixtures, but in, a, in an unparenthesized expression, um, that's the case. So, an even uh, uh, reading from left to right, an even number of functions is a single two train followed to the right by a sequence of zero or more three trains. And if I display that tree again, um, you can see the two train. At this end, there are only two times in this fork, and all of the other uh, forks have three times. And you can, re you can play with this stuff in the, on the conference edition. So what is a two train? What it, now, we, having got this two train, we can now, that's another little gap in the syntax. It's a form not used by APL. We can assign a meaning to it. In J, two trains implement hooks. And a hook is defined like this, there's a, a dyadic hook and a monadic hook. So for instance, a monadic hook, fg applied to omega, oh sorry, let's, let's take the, the, the dyadic hook. So alpha two train is defined as alpha uh, f g applied to omega. And the j monadic hook um, duplicates the omega onto the other side. And this is where we, we, we may want to diverge from J. Dialog already does, does hooks with relative ease. So the dialog, a dyadic hook, is just jot, compose. We can already make this, um, we can already make this guy. Uh, J uses a, a hook to make this guy, but we can always make, we can make this guy with a, just a jot. We can already do that. And um, a monadic hook is, we can just use the commute to, to distribute the right argument to both sides. So the, uh, what I said was we're, slightly, we're starting from a slightly different um, position from J. Um, and in fact, if we want to be, if we want to be um, very clever, we can make an ambivalent hook, which is both either monadic or dyadic, by doubling up the commutes. I'll leave you to, uh, to think that, uh, that through. But if effectively, the, uh, let me think what happens. Oh, you can, you can work it out. Exercise for the student. Um, here's an example. So having done that, um, here's a um, power sequence hook. 
um, which is to the power iota, and used dyadically, it means 3 to the power iota 4, which is 3 to the power 1, 3 to the power 2, 3 to the power 3, 3 to the power 4. And used monadically, it's 4 to the power iota 4, which is 4 to the 1, 4 to the 2, 4 to the 3, 4 to the 4. So the, the point is here, we could follow J and just use two trains as hooks, but we've already got a me mechanism for doing that. So the question is, is there a better use for a two train than hook? This is one of the questions uh, we need to consider. Now, J has an atop conjunction which is not only handy, but it's actually vital for... In fact, I think I was telling you a fib, a porky pie, in Cockney rhyming style. I was telling you a porky. Um, you need the atop conjunction to um, generally translate um, tr trains into... generally translate an arbitrary pars tree into... Um, uh, function trains. <clears throat> you really need a top. I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. And the atop conjunction is defined like this. What it does, given an f and g function, it moves the alpha out of here and plops it to the left-hand side of the g. And this, is, again, is a very uh, nice combinator. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's something you, you often want. <clears throat> So in this experiment on the conference stick, the dyadic two train means a top. <clears throat> so this is the definition. It differs from J. And this is a big, I, I've learned to differ from J with a lot of caution. And the, and the only, um, uh, as I say, the only uh, reason for even co contemplating it is that we're starting from a slightly different position. We already have tools that cover some of that use. <clears throat> um, and uh, I couldn't think of a, a, a sane use of um, uh, the monadic fork other than just as composed. So this is a shorthand for composed. So in this experiment on the conference stick, a dyadic two train is a top and a monadic two train is composition. So here's an example of it. Um, this is, we, we pronounce this, um, col uh, monadic comma bar is a uh, column. So this is comma, uh, uh, column atop reshape. So this is doing the, the column of the two, three reshape. This is an example of its use. And um, here is, uh, here's the vector of functions from above. And if I stick another there's the functions from above, but if I make a train here, this is reverse atop the vector of functions. So this is doing the original uh, result that we saw, but if I make a two train here, this is just applying um, the, uh, uh, what, am I do what am I doing here? This is moving the, yeah, this is moving the six over into the middle, and it's effectively just moving the reverse to the outside. This is reverse atop the vector functions. Now, what we saw was the, the possible three train forms we saw. These are all of the possible three train forms. We've exploited all of the syntax there. There are only two possible two train forms. Um, the FG which we've seen and an AG, an array followed by a function, which we haven't seen. So we can define AG to be left argument currying. And this means, um, this is the definition of this, that um, AG, the, the two train AG applied to omega is AG omega. So for example, I can define next to be one plus. That's a two train, which I am defining the, this AG form of two train to be left argument curry. So there's no conflict. And next of three is four. That's just a, the successor function. <clears throat> uh, compare timing. So this is uh, compose versus currying. 
I, I can't remember how this. I think these compare about equal. I don't think there's much. <clears throat> there's much in this. It depends um, which day you run it. Well, the, the currying, you know, wins by two percent this time, but there's 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 nothing in it. I I think it just looks nice, but that, again, this is one of the contentious ones that may not make it into the uh, product. Yeah. Yeah. No. So here's some more examples of trains in general, some combinations. Here's one. There's a train. And what the parser goes along and says, this is a three train. So this is the FBH form. And then there's a two train here, which is the left argument currying. So this is a, a slick expression Fahrenheit from Celsius. And here's some well-known... Um, Celsius temperatures converted to Fahrenheit. <coughs> oh, this is just showing off. This, uh, the trains, a lot of trains are amenable to doing an inverse on. So this is a Celsius from Fahrenheit. Um, not all trains. Uh, that's something that's a work in progress. But many of the trains have inverses. <coughs> but in this case. Um, that, that, that whole train can be uh, inverted. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, it's a question about the previous. Bit, you're, uh, right? you're my most difficult customer. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the AG form, you said it was left up around curry. Yeah. Um, so this left one, argument curry in the yeah. Yeah. Um, So this might not make any sense, but is there a dyadic form of what that means? The, there was initially, that's a really how cute, uh, you, you, you to the point. Initially there was, and um, I, I, it was nonsense. I couldn't uh, make it do anything sensible, so I removed it. Yeah. I re I, if you can think of a good um, use for it, but I couldn't find, uh, I think I, uh, what did I did? I did alpha AG omega was alpha G AG omega, I tried, and I couldn't find any use for it. I, well, I found some pretty tenuous ones, but uh, so I removed that. And you'll see there's a gap in the table. Um, now, what is this doing? Um, oh, this is just showing these um, function trees. So this is the uh, this is the Fahrenheit, which way Fahrenheit from Celsius, and this is the Celsius from Fahrenheit um, thing. But actually, I'm using a, a train uh, here to display this. And this, what well, this train, the F. Um, display function tree. Display function tree is an operator, so this is a this is a derived function, and this is a derived function, and this is a link function. So this is just a three train saying, do this, do this, and join them together to show me the. Uh, <coughs> yeah. I'm still not convinced you've got some kind of conflict between um, left argument code yeah. and your IFG track. Um, on the basis that so far in dialogue, the binding streets differ from A-built to slightly. Yeah. You've got vector at the top, <coughs> then brackets, then right up brand, then left up brand, then left argument. Yeah. Now all that. And what you're doing is sticking three train above left argument. But so far you've not actually said anything about binding streets. No, the binding strength is sort of interesting. I'm, a, I'm acutely aware that I'm going to be pushing into um, the next session if I'm careful or not careful. The, but the, the, the parsing rules for trains are they're not like operator. Um, it's a very sort of um, lazy evaluation. What, what the, uh, the, the operator stuff has got is all you know, revved up on binding strengths. And these guys just drift along from the right accumulating trains. So I'd, I'd like to take that offline if I can and uh, ca come to that. What I want to show you is, and uh, this is just again showing off some performance, this is um, defining the average function as a tradition, trad fun, a d fun and a fork, and this is again going to do a time comparison for these guys. So Kumpux is going to time these, you know, lots and lots of times and then divide by the uh, the loop count, 
and this should show you that in a nice sort of way that um, Defens beat Tradfens and Forks beat uh, 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 Defens in this case. So again, it's a little slicker because some of the work has been done. Um, this, uh, I'll, let, me, let me go through quickly. There is a gotcha, and one of the things, um, Ken Iverson, every time he met me, he teased me about what I'd done with his language. And he'd say, this, uh, this uh, John, this slash, in dialogue, what is that? Uh, <laughs> and I'd, uh, it's a, you know, sometimes it's a function, sometimes it's an operator in there. He never, he never tired of uh, doing that. So this is a D fund that's going to do, what is this? This is doing the I to omega, the I to four replicate of I to four. And that sort of looks like the kind of thing that you, we could train. Look, this is exactly a fork. So it would be tempting to express that like this. And the problem is, in dialogue, this guy, seeing the, uh, uh, a function to its left, becomes, uh, becomes an operator and uh, it doesn't like it. So the, just be wary of the slashes are a problem. Um, if you want to do that, the ways to solve it are either to make, a, a, make it an explicit function or you could bind a uh, tack, you could make a derived function and that would work okay. That, that's just wariness when you, um, don't phone me up on my room at three o'clock in tomorrow morning when you're playing with this saying uh, slashes don't work. Now the, the final thing I want to say I think is that uh, although we have uh, said a top, you need a top, a top can actually be expressed as a fork um, and the fork it can be, this is a two train column a top reshape, but we can actually express it like this. <clears throat> and effectively what this is doing is um, this guy is ignoring both arguments and this guy is doing the two reshape three and then this guy is, a, is a, um, applying the atop and then ignoring anything to its left. So you, you, we don't Typically, the fork, the, th the three train, is sufficiently general to be able to express a top, but it's not a, it, it's, a, it's slightly ugly, so you wouldn't want to be doing that. So there's an argument for, uh, for doing that. Um, and it, you can, in fact, you put anything to the, to, in the first train. This is an AGH fork. It, it, uh, any, it, yeah, you can do that. Um, uh, I can't remember what, oh, there's, or, or you could write to a top as a, as a D operator. Okay, so now here's the summary. Um, so we're nearly there. Um, the, there's the, the, this is the whole summary of the two trains and the three trains. And this is the gap. Um, Joe was asking me, we don't have a dyadic um, uh, AG definition. There wasn't a sensible one, but all of the other ones appear to be, uh, there is some use, there are some examples. And here are the questions. I'm going to um, end on these. So question zero is should we add function trains to dialogue? If so, um, the, the, the outstanding thing is the two train. Should it be a syntax error? And there's a good argument for saying, don't do that, leave it available until we have a better idea. Should it be a top, as we've demonstrated? Should it be a hook, as in J? And I, I'm still not sure. I think there might be some very hidden beauty in this that I haven't had the experience to... Uh, uh, to uh, come to, or should it be something else? So that I'm a, I've overrun by a minute. It, I probably got one. Well, we've been mopping questions up, but maybe one question. If uh, yes, Keaton. Are the parentheses required? Uh, no. In this table, no. This is uh, I've put additional. Well, some of them are, and some of the um, actually in this table they are. Um, sorry, on the left they are, but on the right this is just to, to, to show you what's going on. So I put additional parentheses in um, on the right just to, to <coughs> emphasize which thing is, um, is, is, done, uh, is executed first. So in this case, this is a train and the parentheses are required because if I remove those parentheses, um, then that's regular APL. That would apply G to omega and then use f dyadically, which is not the case. It's the fact that these functions are in isolation. That was Ken's breakthrough. 
uh, that is a form not used by APL. So the stuff on the left is all currently a syntax, the stuff on the left of the arrows is all currently a syntax error in regular dialogue and these are the definitions this is what, instead of a syntax error, we've replaced it by this behaviour in the conference edition. All right, thank you.